So a little over a week ago, some news dropped that was absolutely devastating <laughs> and broke my heart. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, basically it was a collection of images and videos reported on Twitter and X that showed a canceled project, a project called Project Apollo. And this was under development over at Monolith, the guys that would eventually go on to produce Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor in 2014. However, this project was set to release in like the 2011, 2012 range and was actually a Nolan verse Batman game that used a rudimentary version of the nemesis system. So the idea was that you were going to play as Batman fighting crime in Gotham and you would build relationships with up and coming criminals. And if they defeated you, or if you defeated them, it would change your relationship with that criminal. So you could have one guy that starts just as a grunt that you fight randomly out in the streets of Gotham. Maybe he kicks your butt or something, gets a lucky punch in, and then he works his way up eventually to be like a kingpin crime boss in Gotham, running a district, basically becoming like on the level of the Penguin or Joker, but it's completely dynamic and purely based on your gameplay. I think it has so much potential and it's such a cool idea and would work so freaking well with the Batman IP. It's devastating <laughs> that this was canned and never saw the light of day. I mean, this was pretty much dumped. You can see in the bottom left hand corner of the footage here, it says version 1.0.10.0, do not distribute. And it's filmed on March 15th of 2010 at 2.37 in the afternoon. And this is one of the last collections of data and footage. This is lost media at this point. We don't really know what happened to the builds they had, but pretty much from what we can tell, everything they had collected here was dumped and scrapped and eventually retooled and reworked to be turned into the Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor game that we would eventually get and really, really enjoy. And the reason that Warner Brothers did this was because they didn't want to have two competing Batman franchises. So they didn't want to have the Arkham games competing with this and vice versa. They wanted to just have one that could take all of the spotlight, which might have been the right choice, might have been the wrong choice. I think this would have stood on its own, but whatever. It's okay. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed <laughs> about it at this point. I'm just, argh, it would have been so good. However, the good news is that the technology that they developed for this game didn't go nowhere. It was retooled into Shadow of Mordor. And that got me thinking about the Nemesis system and the wild amount of potential that it had as a technological advancement in the action genre. It's just so frustrating that instead of getting more games that feature it, we've gotten one new game with the Nemesis system since it was originally revealed in 2014. We got 2017's Shadow of War, which we'll talk about. And after that, there's been pretty much nothing. We have a Wonder Woman game that's in the works. We'll probably see revealed this summer would be my guess, but that's about it. Meanwhile, Warner Brothers has patented the technology so it can't be used by other developers until a future date. We're gonna talk all about that, but I just wanna run through the details of this Nemesis system, explain to you how amazing it is, and then show you how instead of using it for good, Warner Brothers has used it to try and milk customers for all they're worth. And they've also taken every step they can to prevent other studios from utilizing this technology in a productive way that will lead to better games and improvements in the action adventure genre. It really is tragic, especially when other creative types out there have opened their patents. Tesla famously opened all of their EV patents because they wanted to accelerate EV adoption and development of electronic vehicles. So. Tesla, smartly or not, opened up all those patents so other companies could use them. Instead of hogging all of the technology to themselves, they shared it. Warner Brothers, though, didn't do that. <laughs> and they had this really cool thing they refused to share with anybody. So the whole thing is just tragic. It's very frustrating. And I'm gonna share my frustration with you in this video. Luke, is there something more productive about this video? Are you gonna like drop some news or show any cool reveals or anything? Nope, I'm just complaining about the Nemesis system not being used. And this is just going to be a collection of sorrow filled pontifications. And I'm just gonna vent to you. And that's basically this video. So buckle up, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> of course, subscribe and all that stuff because I'm supposed to say that we just hit a half a million. Thank you for that. Thank you to everybody who is in that first half a million. You guys are wonderful. And if you're not, get in this second half a million. 
subscribe while you can because uh, we're on our way to seven figures eventually at this rate probably like 2035 but we'll get there eventually it'll be cool <laughs> so back in 2013 warner brothers revealed middle earth shadow of mordor this is a video from 2013 when ign covered this announcement and was super super excited about it but we didn't really have much to go off of other than that, this was going to be a new first person adventure game that was going to allow for emergent gameplay with a new system that they were calling the Nemesis system. But nobody really knew what that meant. It just was like a cool way of describing emergent gameplay. But we had heard emergent gameplay plenty of times before. Todd Howard at this point had already talked about emergent gameplay in Skyrim with endless radiative quests that never end so you have infinite quest lines so it didn't really mean anything people were like okay it's just marketing crap but what we eventually got in 2014 was anything but marketing crap shadow of mordor had one of the most significant improvements to the action adventure genre that has ever been made as far as i'm concerned every grunt every npc that you would encounter was capable of becoming a major character in the plot if you got killed by any one of these orcs they could rise the ranks eventually even becoming a chieftain themselves running their own little army and commanding other lower tier enemies to fight you in various ways they had a collection of traits and personality types all of which could change and alter based on how you played the game if you happen to use certain environmental hazards all the time when attacking them or if you only wanted to fight high-level bosses by stealthily attacking them sneakily they could actually adapt and evolve changing their methods and strategies as the game went on and practically every single player had a totally different experience when they played the game i for one had one massive burly dude that i could not for the life of me kill consistently and so every time he would take me out he would go up a few levels grow even stronger and my time with the game was a mixture of going through the campaign for story reasons and also trying to overcome this one stupid npc that always knew how to push my buttons but for every other player they had their own experience their own character that drove them crazy their own nemesis and it's a system that is so brilliant and works so well it boggles the mind how nobody thought of it before you know it's just fascinating and it's so freaking cool and there's so much potential as we said with the batman games where you could put this system in there to have low level enemies and grunts that you fight each potentially becoming their own warlord or district chieftain or whatever you would want to call them it has so much potential as a system and in shadow of mordor we started to see that potential realized and it started to get the gears turning making you wonder where this could go like is there a ceiling on this thing or do we just keep turning dials up and see what happens well that's what 2017's shadow of war promised to be a totally revamped and overhauled version of the nemesis system that was trying to just add more craziness and chaos to the already fantastically received nemesis system this time with the sequel they wanted to really challenge players with tons more content and variety within the nemesis system itself they also tossed in a couple new interlocking gameplay loops that aimed to encourage you to work with the nemesis system even more specifically the fortress siege mode where you were aiming to to recruit tons of different orcs with different abilities and traits that you could use to attack other fortresses and to also protect and defend your own sounds cool right you like the nemesis system you like grabbing all these orcs and finding ones that you enjoy working with and that have interesting personalities and capabilities what if they allowed you to basically build an army with those and then they allow you to actually go and use those armies that you've crafted to fight other armies that have change their opinions of you based on how they fought you before like so many interesting ways to tie all of these systems in it's a really really cool concept right what could possibly go wrong <laughs> Well, naturally, Warner Brothers knew that they had struck oil with the first game, and so they decided to try and find a way to milk players even more. And like I said at the top, this was 2017, the golden age of loot boxes. So 
they decided to combine the two. For one, they revamped the gear system. They also added in different gems and things that could be extremely powerful if properly kitted out. And they also balanced these things around a lot of grind. Just like in Diablo games, you could actually combine these gems that you would collect into even more powerful versions of them for improved bonuses and perks. You were also encouraged to consistently scrap all of your extra pieces of gear so that you could gain extra components that you would use for upgrading your orcs or or unlocking additional gem slots. In addition, if you grinded for a bunch of stuff, you could scrap it and use it to collect basically an in-game currency that you could then use to purchase a certain type of loot box that wasn't as good as the ones you could buy with real world money, but at least gave you something. The loot boxes you could purchase with real world cash were quite powerful, some even guaranteeing legendary grade orcs right off the bat. And this was necessary because while you could complete the base game and the story relatively quickly, quickly in a few dozen hours, if you wanted to see the true ending of the game, you would need to grind for anywhere from 70 to 150 hours, depending on reports at launch. Otherwise, you just simply wouldn't have orcs powerful enough to withstand the onslaught of the other armies that would attack your fortresses. And this is where it honestly gets kind of difficult to talk about Shadow of War at launch, because a lot of the stories that have been done on this game, at least that were done at launch, no longer seemingly are available if you try to search for them. There are still some videos from YouTubers like Yong Ye who did reporting on it back in the day, and I'm glad those videos are still up because they preserve how this game was when it launched, but a lot of mainstream outlets seemingly don't have any of their original reports up for this game anymore. It could also be that with search engine optimization, all of those articles are just so deeply buried within all of these websites and archives that you just can't really find it anymore. Because what eventually happened is after players stopped buying a lot of the microtransactions because they weren't that thrilled about them to begin with, Warner Brothers actually went back in and stripped all of those loot boxes out leaving a better game intact at the end of the day, but it still feels weird. There's a strange void within the game where the progression doesn't feel like it's working quite right and you're collecting these items, but you don't really know what to do with the items and you scrap them, but it, you can't really use the currency that you get for it for very much. And, and so the whole game just feels kind of off balance and off kilter. And it's because the game wasn't designed like that. It was designed around loot boxes being present and being a very active part of the gameplay loop. But now, like, you can play the game and have a good time with it. It's just weird. And of course, I want to give credit where it's due to Monolith and Warner Brothers for removing all of the loot boxes. But also, like, they really shouldn't have been there to begin with. <laughs> and so it's like, good job, I guess, that you're not doing that bad thing anymore but they also left him in the game for a while so you know i just i just don't know what to make of it it's just it's complicated there's complicated feelings all told the loot boxes just get in the way of the game and it's really really unfortunate because loot boxes and and like monetization and microtransactions in single player games almost always are built around giving players the ability to pay to play less of the game it's like when ubisoft puts in xp boosts where they're allowing you to skip side quests and stuff because you don't need the xp they pay out if you have the xp booster so you just can blast through the main story and it's always pitched as like time saving and in this case it was like yeah you're saving time by buying better orcs so that you don't have to grind for them or level them up or anything like that which is just weird it's like i bought a video game and you're selling me the ability to play less of it which is weird <laughs> but this is where microtransactions in single player games are actually at their worst it's when the game is balanced in a way where they're trying to push you into purchasing them and that's the problem with shadow of war this isn't a situation like a resident evil 4 remake or even a dragon's dogma 2 where the game is really good by itself and then you can also purchase things on the side if you are insane in this case the game is extremely bloated and is balanced in a way to push you into spending five bucks or 10 bucks here and there to skip 10 hours of mindless tedium. But with all that said, they ended up scrapping the loot boxes. And if you play the game today, whether it's on Xbox, PC or PlayStation, your time with the game can be really, really good. I enjoy playing the game occasionally. It still is a great game with a great combat system and a really interesting nemesis system. The late game gets a little weird because it's not balanced very well because they 
balanced it very, very differently and designed it differently, but you can still have fun with it. But regardless, after this, Monolith went away and started working on another video game. We didn't know what it was going to be, but most people assumed it was probably going to be another Middle Earth Shadow of Something game. Then rumbling started coming out that maybe they were working on something more associated with DC as opposed to Middle Earth. And this seemed to jive with some other news that was breaking at the time, which was, of course, that Warner Brothers was going to be releasing two games in the DC universe in the form of Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. So it made sense that they were going to do another DC game on their end using the Nemesis system. And of course, eventually it was revealed to be the Wonder Woman game, which we can expect to probably see this year at some point. However, in 2021, we got news of a patent that was filed. And interestingly, this patent was originally filed back in 2015 but was rejected repeatedly for six years for various reasons. However, the modern version of this patent granted on February 23rd of 2021 describes the Nemesis system, Nemesis characters, forts, social vendettas, and followers in computer games. And you can see it's actually granted to Warner Brothers Entertainment Incorporated and is active, meaning that this is currently holding for everybody operating in the United States that if another studio tries to build a game using the Nemesis system, they can be sued for infringement of these patents, which is insane. <laughs> Now we have gotten other systems before that are similar, or at the very least derivative. In the Assassin's Creed games, you might remember the mercenary systems from the likes of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And those systems are very reminiscent of the Nemesis system, though they are far less dynamic and adaptive. But that's really the extent of a similarly designed system that we've seen. And it's simply because nobody wants to try to go head to head against Warner Brothers in a lawsuit for a system that they could just design differently from the outset. Now, the one silver lining, I guess, is that this is set to expire on August 11th of 2036. So in 12 years, they'll no longer be able to prevent other studios from doing this, I guess. So like, that's good. So in like 15 years, we might see a, another studio take a crack at a Nemesis system game which would put it in line for like the PlayStation 7, maybe the PlayStation 8, I don't know. So I guess we have that to look forward to. <laughs> and I guess this is just up to personal interpretation or opinions. If you don't mind this, then so be it. But personally for me, I really don't like gameplay systems and mechanics being copyrighted or patented in various ways. I, I just don't, I don't like it. You know, I, I don't think that you should be able to copyright like bejeweled games or like connect three games. I don't think you should be able to patent Tetris looking games. Like if you're the first ones to do it, I think everybody's going to know that and hopefully respect it. But as gamers, you would think we would all be rooting for each other and hoping that we can just make better and better games. And if one studio designs the Nemesis system and then another studio comes along and does the Nemesis system plus one and it's even better and crazier, Hopefully they would learn from that and make an even better game and everybody could work collaboratively. Similarly, of course, to what Tesla did with the patents for EVs and everything that they did with electronic vehicles, where uh, Elon, intelligently or not, opened up access to all of the patents that Tesla held so that other companies could use the technology that they developed. Even though that didn't make sense in terms of business, it didn't make sense to open it up for everybody to be able to use their secrets and their patented technologies. They opened it up because they wanted to advance electronic vehicle adoption and technological advancement. They wanted to make the world of electronic vehicles better so they took the blow of not protecting all of that information and keeping it to themselves for the greater good. Whether you love Tesla or hate them, that at the very least I think is an admirable thing to do. And you would hope that they would do something similar here where they have an amazing gameplay system that revolutionized the potential for action adventure games to have every NPC potentially a character in the story. It's a super, super cool concept and there's so much potential there. But instead of sharing it with the industry and other artists and designers, they patented it and are keeping it under lock and key and 
we've seen pretty much nothing done with it except for an attempt to utilize it in an extremely predatory way, capitalizing on the worst impulses of gamers to milk them for every penny they have. It's just really, really unfortunate. And I pulled up the patent and looked through it in detail. You know, they've got the full description of all of these systems and how they work. It sounds like they were initially shot down in the 2015 applications because there was a lack of clarity and specificity with some of these things. So the final version that's outlined in this patent is very, very precise and particular. So I think there are ways that other studios could take a whack at this. But again, like it might just not make sense for them to do it. If you're going to design a game with like dynamically generated NPCs and enemies, if it gets uncomfortably close to the nemesis system, it's just more trouble than it's worth. Because even if you go to court and even if you do win the case, it's going to take 10 years and millions and millions and millions of dollars. And at that point, just wait 12 years until the patent expires and then you can just make the game you wanted to make. And on the part of like big multinational corporations, that just makes more sense. Like, eh, people don't really care. We'll just make another cosmetic for, for whatever sports game and we'll make a billion dollars from that. We don't need to bother with all this stuff. It's fine. It's just unfortunate that the threat of litigation is just so overwhelming that it puts a hamper on creative development it's too bad but this is it if you're interested you can just google the patent and find uh the details and research it yourself it's kind of crazy i will say that there have been discussions as recently as a year ago at the potential of the nemesis system coming to other franchises such as mortal kombat and harry potter but when you read the nitty-gritty details of these articles they are very very vague and it requires a lot of inference specifically like there's this job posting that went up for warner brothers games where they were looking for a director of engineer central technology which basically they describe how they want somebody to use strategic systems that each of the individual teams, whether it's Rocksteady, Avalanche, or Monolith, have built. And they want to use those strategic systems in Unreal Engine 5 to build future games in the DC Universe, Harry Potter, Lego, or Mortal Kombat games. Which could mean anything. I mean, it could mean like, oh, Avalanche did a good job making an open world game. So we want to use open world technologies to make a Lego game. It doesn't necessarily mean specifically the Nemesis system, but this doesn't not mean that. So maybe. <laughs> this is pure cope. Uh, I'm going to be real. This is pure, pure cope. I think it just makes sense for them to use the Nemesis system if they have it under patent lock and key locked and loaded they know gamers love it why not use it in other games other franchises i don't know what this would look like in a harry potter game honestly in a batman game it makes sense because you're fighting low level grunts all the time so the potential for them to grow in power and build a relationship with the character just makes sense in a harry potter game it would be like you're a wizard and then you like go and fight goblins who maybe have like dynamic relationships with you it's a lot less clear you know it doesn't make as much sense i also don't know how it will work with this wonder woman game i'm optimistic but time will tell but unfortunately the tale of the nemesis system is just a tragic one of wasted potential and corporate greed instead of seeing the potential for this system and how it could create its own genre within gaming warner brothers instead simply looked at it as a new mechanism to drive monetization and what started as a way to dynamically tell stories between players and NPCs in a totally emergent way where the designers don't even have to write anything. They can just let it happen. They used it to just create a new way of monetizing. And it's just really, really tragic. Because when you look at this, no part of this is about creating dynamic stories or letting relationships between characters and NPCs and, and PCs like organically develop. None of that is at play here. This is all just about how we can get you to open the next chest and to buy more of the gold currency so you can buy more of these loot boxes. And it's just really, really 
really unfortunate. Now, I will say a lot of people have been wondering if Wonder Woman is going to be designed by Monolith in the same way that their last game was, basically as a live service game with loot boxes and all sorts of monetization at its core. And this was riled up after a job listing was posted looking for a lead software engineer of gameplay on Wonder Woman, and they specifically asked that that candidate had experience in helping maintain a live software product or game. And a lot of people looked at that and were like, oh my God, see, they're just turning this into another live service game. But Warner Brothers actually took the unprecedented step to come out and clearly and concisely deny that accusation by saying, quote, Wonder Woman is a single player action adventure game set in a dynamic open world. This third person experience will allow players to become Diana of Thymus Sarah. I don't watch wonder woman stuff and introduce an original story set in the dc universe while also featuring the nemesis system mm, love that wonder woman is not being designed as a live service now they don't say it won't have microtransactions they don't say it won't have dlc they don't say any of that stuff but they do say it is not being designed as a live service which is something that's at least something and i'll give them credit for that but unfortunately with all of this we just have to look at it skeptically shocker right the ceo of warner brother discovery ceo david zaslov has said that they are focusing not just that they're trying to do this they're focusing on transforming our biggest franchises from largely console and pc based with three to four year release schedules to include more always on gameplay through live services multi-platform free-to-play extensions with the goal to have more players spending more time and money on more platforms, end quote. And there's no way to like reinterpret that or to twist it. It just is what it is. They want to take traditional games that would release like a Shadow of Mordor, and they want to find ways to add in live service systems, multi-platform systems, free-to-play extensions, microtransactions, things like that to boost monetizability and revenues and profits on each of these titles. So even if they reveal trailers and stuff that show Wonder Woman looking really, really cool, I'll be happy about that. But unfortunately, we're just going to have to believe it when we see it because Shadow of War looked really, really cool until it didn't. And when we saw how the entire game had been designed around loot boxes, it all of a sudden started looking pretty stanky. It, it really seemed like it was going to be an awesome game. And then we found out that little piece of information, all of the pieces fell into place. And it's like, oh, okay, now we see what's actually going on here. So I'll believe it when I see it. I'm optimistic with the Wonder Woman game. I hope that they learned their lesson last time, but time will unfortunately tell. We just can't take them at their word. Uh, I mean, they dropped Hogwarts Legacy, which was just a full on single player game. No added stuff, no DLC, just there i guess technically they had the exclusive playstation quest line but that's coming for free it's like a timed exclusive because of playstation buying it it was a whole thing but technically speaking it was just a single player game and that's it so maybe this is going to be a comeback for monolith i don't know but i will not hold my breath you know because if my expectations are low and it ends up being awesome i'll be all the more surprised and elated if my expectations are high though and it's not up there, I'll be devastated. So I'm going to keep my expectations low so I can't be disappointed. But with all of that, I wanna hear you guys sound off in the comments. How devastated are you on a scale from nine to 10 that we're not getting a Batman Nemesis system game? I, for one, am livid. <laughs> so I, I'm heartbroken. I mean, yes, we got Shadow of Mordor, which was awesome and great. And I'm glad we got that. But man, I think a Batman game with the nemesis system has so much potential it's crazy like it's just baffling we never got that so then again maybe that's what uh rocksteady is gonna do after this because i don't think they're gonna be working on their current game for very long honestly <laughs> <laughs> but that's all for me thank you again for 500,000 subs you guys are amazing you blow my mind every single day i love you all and i'll see you in the next video hugs and kisses Bye bye